The title and thumbnail on this video is not clickbait. I wish it was. I have not trained for this marathon. The last time I did any long distance running was over seven weeks ago now when I ran 100K straight through on the Thames path. <laughs> Cute. Since then, I have hit the gym, been on a calorie deficit diet and been training for my sub 30 minute 5K. My focus for the past six weeks since completing the 100K has been to lose body fat, strength train and get faster over a short distance. None of this is training for a marathon. Battersea Park Marathon. So I'm stood here in a really muddy field in Battersea in front of... Where's the start line? And then to add insult to injury, literally, I injured myself two weeks ago. Two Sundays ago, I was supposed to run the Royal Parks Half Marathon, a race I was very much looking forward to. Then in a moment of stupidity, whilst at the gym, the day before the race, I injured my right foot on an exercise bike trying to sprint. So instead of having a fun jaunt through the streets and sunny parks of London, I was sat in A&E being lectured at by a triage nurse and my partner Tracy about the virtues of self-restraint. So with one eye on getting back to running and in a moment of frustration whilst laying on the sofa with my foot elevated, I signed up for the Battersea Park full marathon only 14 days from the moment I clicked go. In front of the start line, it is just gone 8 a.m. Um, been up since four. And yeah, just I've got 27 minutes until my race starts. It felt like the perfect opportunity to force myself from the pity party and out the door running after sustaining an injury that I knew if I left unchecked could lead to complacency. Um, I'll be rationalising why I'm not doing anything because of an injury, basically. It's hard to explain, and I certainly don't advocate anyone copying me by trying to run a marathon or do anything on an injury for that matter, but I have a mentality that if you overindulge in rest for niggles and minor injuries, then they seem to stick around for longer and become more psychological than physical. However, I will caveat, before I get bombarded in the comments, that serious injuries need the appropriate recovery and treatment. And as much as my triage nurse did not recommend running a marathon on my foot, within two weeks, he did say that I should be able to use it for light exercise. So I took this as green light and signed up for the Battersea Park Marathon in exactly two weeks, knowing full well that I hadn't trained for it or was anywhere near ready to run it. And today is 26.2 miles marathon through Battersea Park, 10 laps, 10 laps. But I knew that I would finish it and I would have overcome a really hard, challenge probably the hardest challenge anyone trying to get fit has to overcome which is an injury i've got i've got maddie hey. with me and i've got tracy my support crew so yeah drop my bag in i've got my bib number then if an injury wasn't bad enough i was hit by another steam train the cherry on the bakewell cake five days before the race so last monday i somehow managed to get food poisoning as a vegan you think you're safe from things like this i must have eaten a dodgy tofu salad I was in a bad way. I couldn't eat anything for three days, literally nothing. The days before a marathon, you're supposed to taper, carb load and hydrate. I was throwing up like it was an Olympic sport, literally the opposite of hydrating. Luckily for me, I finally started to feel better last Thursday, so just a few days before the marathon, but I was badly dehydrated, I was sleep deprived and I was malnourished definitely not in peak training readiness for a marathon. I was exhausted. My biggest fear wasn't the fact that I wouldn't finish this. My biggest fear was having the two bob bits halfway round lap two and needing to use a bush in a very busy park in central London. Turns out this didn't happen, which I was very, very grateful for. Yeah, I'd have a coffee. Should we get a coffee? Come Sunday morning, I turned up and found myself stood in a really muddy field in Battersea Park, fully convinced that I could do this. Running is 90% mentality, 10% physical, and I am the master of convincing myself I am capable of anything. 10 laps of the course. Please count your laps as you run past. You have to count your own laps. So now I, can run I then had one more small drama, 
When I turned up at the event, I found out that there is an official five hour cutoff completion time. This is not a fast time, and for 95% of runners that enter this race, it will be completely fine. Most runners complete it between three and four hours, and many complete it sub three hours. There is a bit of a challenge to today's run. So today's run was supposed to just be a marathon jaunt. Obviously, I'm gonna push it and try and do the best I can, I always do, I never go easy. But today has an extra element, which is that there's a five hour cutoff. Um, I've just spoken to the organizers and they are pretty understanding if I'm, you know, within reasonable distance of the finish line, but I can't be finishing at my current PB, um, which was two years ago in the London Marathon, which was six hours, just over six hours. So I'm really hoping that we're able to do this closer to five hours. So that's the challenge. Because this is only my second ever official marathon race, I have run 42K or 26.2 miles in training, but not in an official race. The first time I ran a marathon was the London Marathon back in October of 2021, so two years ago now. And I ran that event in six hours, nine minutes and 51 seconds. Well over the five hour cutoff for this race today. It is adding a bit of uh, anxiety to the start. I'll be, I'll be all right as soon as we get going. Normally, I would be a lot more confident with this time and I'll be happy to go for a five hour finish. But on the back of a foot injury and with my poor hydration and exhaustion levels, I was feeling nervous. After speaking with the event organizers, I found out that there is a 30 minute earlier start time for runners worried that they might be longer than five hours. I was supposed to pre-book this, but they kindly allowed me to start at 8.30 instead of 9 a.m. with the rest of the main runners. <laughs> My Garmin watch had predicted my marathon finish time as five hours and 38 minutes. Based on how I feel, I'd be very happy with this. I set my Garmin watch to track my pace with this time as my target. So if I go too fast or too slow, it warns me and shows my live finish time as, as I move through the race, allowing me to slow down or speed up as required. So if this start line looks like only a handful of people are running this race, then it's because we are starting 30 minutes before everyone else is. And shortly, you will see how crazy busy this race gets as everyone else kicks off and blasts past me. Five, four, three, two, one. Go for it, marathon runners. Enjoy your race, you are amazing. Then for some bizarre reason, I sprint off the start line and I led the race for about 300 meters. For a few minutes, I was in first place and was officially the race leader. <laughs> He's at the front! He's at the front! Look at him! Too, too fast! Too fast! I'm in first place. At this point, and for the first half of the marathon, I maintained a sub five hour finish time. I absolutely blitz the first half of this race. Now the route is 10 laps of the park. Off the start line, you do one lap of the running track out into the park, around the bandstand, and then you start the 10 laps that you have to keep track of yourself. So if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. As we leave the start line, we are led by a marshal on a bike to ensure we follow the correct loop around the bandstand, which is the only time you do this extra bit. Always start a start line as you mean to go on and always finish a finish line with a sprint. I'm no longer at the front. Um, there was a small pack that started early, started 30 minutes early from the rest of the runners. So far, so good. My watch predicted today's run at best to be 5.38. So if I ran at my Garmin prediction, I'll be 38 minutes over the maximum time. My PB is just over six hours, but that was two years ago when I ran the London Marathon. And I don't want to jinx it, but I've lost a lot of weight since then. So I'm hoping that my overall fitness levels and my newfound weight loss means that I'll be smashing my marathon PB today. Okay, we're at mile two. Things are going really well. This pace I can maintain I know for at least half the marathon. This is fantastic route. It's pretty and it's just 10 laps of the park.
I came off the start line like a bat out of hell. I ran the first few miles at a really fast pace, too fast. And when the other runners get released and they start their race, I get caught up in the melee atmosphere and hype. And I try to maintain a pace with runners who are a lot lighter and a lot faster than me. And probably runners who haven't spent the past week shitting and throwing up. <laughs> okay, we're just coming on to finish our first loop. Thank you. Uh, and I can see that all the other marathon runners have just started. So I'm going to be joining them as they start. And then I'm going to get lapped, which I must not, must not try and keep up with them. Here they are. Thank you. Do not keep up. It's not a park run. Yeah. <laughs> so just to reiterate, as it seems bizarre to have started before the rest of the pack, but those that are worried about missing the five hour cutoff could start 30 minutes early. We're all chipped, we're all timed, and our finish times are our finish times, regardless of what time we started. We all ran the same route, and it's very humbling to be lapped by almost everyone in the race, even with a 30 minute head start. So the reason I slipped through here was because I had already completed this extra start loop and now just had to do the main loops. That's brilliant. I feel like I've cheated. It got even more confusing when they started the half marathon runners at 10 a.m and they joined the race like 500 Linford Christie's blasting past me. Because of all these different dynamics, this race had a very different feel to the London Marathon, but in a really good way. At no point did it feel confusing. It just meant that you had no idea if the person running with you was on the same loop as you or the one in front. This would be the only point in the marathon where I'll be running with the sub three hours. <laughs> Do not try and keep up right. I have just taken 15 minutes off my finish time. I come to my watch. I am now a 4.40 finish. So I need to slow down. I am running a 5.30 per kilometre pace at the moment because I've got completely uh, caught up in the vibe and the speed. I am going. I am going way too fast. Let's go! Let's go! Come on. What's your name? Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, what's yours? My name's Eric. Eric. AKA the most electrifying running entertainer in the goddamn world. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Ryan. What makes you want to run with a GoPro? Uh, why not? What makes you? Uh, I like race day. I make race day movies. <laughs> Motivational talking running. I want to prove I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember, it's not about the pace. Uh, no. It's all about finishing yeah, the race. Yeah, yeah, you say that now. <laughs> Sit rep. So we're over five miles. I've missed the five mile mark. All the signs are for the three or four different races. So you've got the full marathon, half marathon, I've got a Garmin watch, so I'm okay. We're now on our second lap. We're just coming up to the end of the second lap. So that means eight more laps. I'm into my rhythm. I've got a good pace. Started off really fast. However, if I'm brutally honest, I'm very unsure if I'm gonna be sustaining this pace. The support here is phenomenal. There's a marshal every oh, 200 yards is phenomenal and they're all cheering you on what an atmosphere what a great park to run it's completely flat completely pancake flat which is great so far my ankle's okay i say okay because i can feel it but we're all good we're pushing to the end of the second lap thank you Okay, seven miles, seven miles, ticked off, 
starting to feel it a bit now. I've had an energy gel. So, hopefully that will reinvigorate my legs. Let's keep going. <laughs> Can I borrow that? <laughs> <laughs> Just coming up to the end of the third lap. I thought I won't count down each lap, but here we are. Counting down each lap. Thank you. Okay, so the half marathon is about to start behind me and I'm about 200 yards from the start line. So that means I'm going to have even faster, more enthusiastic half marathon runners blasting past me. Do not, Ryan, keep up with them because you will kill over. I'm now going past the running track with the start line and the half marathon runners have just started. Do you want me to take your jacket? No. Keep going. Run after him. Follow I'm him. not running after run. him. Run. I try not to run with them, but again, I fall into the trap of trying to keep up and I get caught up in the buzz. And to be fair, I don't regret this at all. It was great. It was an atmosphere that I really enjoyed. <laughs> You guys are great. I look oh. forward to coming around. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Keep on going. I'm going to try and get into a rhythm now. It's that bandstand bit. It's really hyped. And then with the half marathon, my pace picked up. I can feel it now. All right, let's keep going. There are pacers on the course wearing yellow t-shirts and they're carrying flags and balloons on their back. Flags for the half marathon, balloons for the main marathon. I started running with this pacing group for a little while, which was ridiculous and completely unnecessary, especially considering they were probably a couple of laps ahead of me. It's only now in edit that I realise it was also a half marathon pacer and not even a marathon pacer. When I run events like these, I enjoy the atmosphere, the vibe, and the race as an event more than the finish time. If I wanted to achieve a sub five hour finish time, then running like this would be self-sabotage. I would just wouldn't do it. It'd be crazy to run like this. But the way I saw it, my prep and training was already non-existent. So why not just enjoy myself? And I ran the way I wanted to. Pace is still okay. Okay. The next lap will tick over halfway. So, that'll be good. And then it was at this point I spotted the official photographer and attempted the pose. You have to attempt to sprint if you see an official photographer on a race. Uh, and this was my attempt at a sprint. <laughs> Just had to speed up the camera. Always got to do that. I don't regret running fast at the start or even trying to run with the other runners, as this is something I don't experience when I run on my own. He is still moving. He is still moving. There he is. And he's got all the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the evidence. Oh my God, I'm in front. Hello. What lap are you on? My fifth. Maddie, my eldest daughter, and Tracy were both there to film and support me as I sped past. She's on your tiptoes. But apparently they got bored, so went to the zoo that's inside the park. Carol and Susan! Carol! Susan. I did wonder where they were when I went past the spot that we agreed to meet. Here, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. They were supposed to throw some water at me and film me as I go past in a... We're halfway round lap five. We're coming up to the halfway mark. At the halfway point, and based on my pace, I was on for a sub five hour finish. I absolutely smashed the first 13.1 miles of this race. But it was at this point that my lack of training and food poisoning and foot injury and dehydration all caught up with me. I hit a wall, a really big wall, and the wheel started to fall off. Well done, well done. Brilliant, then. Yeah. You're still smiling. 
I'm still smiling. I'm over halfway. Come on, he is flying. How are you feeling, bro? I'm uh, feeling it. You're feeling it? Yeah. Come on. I'm at 5.30 finish at the moment. 5.30? Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. I'm at 25k. 25k? Come on, you've got another, what, 17? Yeah. Come on, bro. Good work, man. Come on, even We're if you smashing. slow down, you're going to beat your PV. I know. Just think about that. Even We're if you do beat it. your PV by 30 seconds, you still beat it. Still beat it. Come on, you're doing fantastic, bro. Keep up. Cheers, man. Work. To be honest, based on how I felt in the days before this race, just turning up on the start line was an achievement in itself. Beating my London marathon time of just over six hours was what I needed to do. Let's go, Captain Fire. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Let's go, Thank you. Hey. Well, Easy. How many more have you got? I've lost count. Oh. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> the smile's turned into a grimace. Then on lap eight, and with delirium starting to set in, I started shouting David Goggins' quotes at my 16-year-old daughter as I ran past. Sorry, mad. Not sorry. <laughs> what lap are you on? You don't know me, son! Uh, you don't know me, son! Shush. What lap are you on? Uh, eight. Eight, keep going, two more! Well, I've just tipped over 22 marks. I've got 4.2 marks left to go. Oh. Feeling it now. I'm feeling pretty rough. Then I did it again as I started the final lap. She really hates it when I'm loud in public, so part of the reason I did it. How skinny his legs look. You don't know me, son? Shush. You don't know me? Shush. That's embarrassing. Oh. It's my last one. Last one. Filming bits. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Keep it up, by the way. You, you two are great. Okay, this is the last lap. 5k left. Each lap is 5k, apparently. I don't think I'm going to beat my 5k PB on this lap. I'd just be pleased to finish. I'm so happy to nearly finished. <laughs> nearly there. As I come into the final 300 meters of the race, I have to rejoin the running track. Thank you. Thank God! Thank you. You felt better. Come on, you smashed it. They're running with it. <laughs> They're running together. Absolutely smashed it. And you know what? We've got the evidence. Oh, I've got the evidence. I've got the evidence. He's got the evidence. I've got the evidence. And as I see the finish line, I attempt to sprint. This is me sprinting after running 26.2 miles. He is absolutely smashing it today. Yes, champ! Oh, I've never seen him run so fast. Why can't you do that the whole way? Let's go! You are so close now! Woo! Woo! <laughs> what a run! What a fantastic finish! Absolutely killed it out there! Just in time for my internet to stop working. And that's it. I completed my second official marathon race in exactly five hours, 41 minutes and two seconds. That's my new marathon PB. It wasn't the sub five and a half hour target I was hoping for, but it was 28 minutes off my London marathon time. 28 minutes. And considering what my training for this looked like, or lack of training, I will 100% take that. Thank you so much. Did I come first? Yes, yes. In my house. First in my house. I'm just going to ring this. I don't want to scare you. <laughs> it works. As I film this, it is now Tuesday. The race was two days ago. My recovery yesterday was fine. My body felt good. My legs and muscles were fine. No soreness or stiffness. I even went food shopping with Tracy against my will. Today I feel fine. No negative effects of the run. My ankle and foot feels fine. No soreness. And I've been able to drink enough water to get back to normal. I even went to the gym today for a light workout, which was, you know, really good. As you can see from my sleep graph provided by my Garmin watch, as I slept Sunday night into Monday morning after the race, my body was heavily stressed, staying at medium to high 
throughout the whole night. I did manage seven hours of broken sleep, which was okay. But when I then compare that to Monday night, so last night, I managed a full 12 hours sleep, which I really needed to recover. And my body stress levels were almost back to pre-marathon levels. If there's one tip I can give you about recovery, people talk about recovery days and supplements. The best thing you can do after a long run is get as many hours sleep as possible. It's the best form of recovery. I will say that this event was fantastic. If you're looking for your first marathon event, I recommend this one. I'm not sponsored or on commission, but I will leave a link to the event organizer's website in the description of this video. The course is pancake flat, which is perfect for beginners. It's very well organized. And most importantly, the atmosphere was electric. If you do decide to run it as your first marathon, then for God's sake, don't copy me. I'm not an expert. Make sure you buy yourself a good 20 week marathon training plan. I'll link the book I first used when I, when I had trained for the London Marathon two years ago. It was excellent. Follow your training religiously, then go out there and smash it. Running this race was what I needed to do. It worked for me, and I know what my body is capable of. Oh my God. I treated it as a training run. That was my mentality. I never went out there with any real expectations. Of course, I push myself, I'm very competitive. But the next time I tackle a marathon, I'll be aiming for the sub five and a half hour mark. I will train properly, I won't get food poisoning, I won't be injured, and I will be lighter than I am now because I'm constantly on that forward, relentless progress. Maddie and Tracy's support as always was superb. And even when the cameras stopped rolling, when my dehydration caught up with me on the way home, they made sure I had everything I needed. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. I've got more videos like this coming soon, but maybe without the added drama of a foot injury and food poisoning. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have already subscribed, thank you very much. See you in the next one.